Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pathways to Leadership podcast at the University of California, Riverside, where we take an intimate walk alongside our housing, dining, and hospitality leaders as they share their personal thoughts and experiences about leadership and their journey toward it. My name is Ebony Phillips, the host of this unique show. In this episode, we're going to talk to Jamie Dixon about her view on balancing commitments. Enjoy the conversation. All right. So, beloved listeners, I want to introduce you to an incredible individual, Jamie Dixon. Jamie is the manager of our market at Glenmore Starbucks here on campus and has been a member of the HDHS team since 2016. Jamie is passionate about, uh, is a passionate leader who, re- who is results driven and thrives on developing others. The majority of Jamie's leadership career was spent as a store manager for Starbucks Coffee Company, and her stellar leadership talents won her the Store Manager of the Year Award in 2013 in the area of people, which is no surprise to me because (laughs) I know Jamie to be a warm spirit who cares about making the guest experience at her store delightful and making her employees feel supported and cared for. Jamie, welcome to the Pathways to Leadership podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Ebony. Awesome. So you're my first guest, which makes you a brave woman. (laughs) (laughs) We're learning together then, so that's good, because it's my first podcast. (laughs) Um, This podcast is something that I have been wanting to do for a while, but I was just too fearful. And I was fearful because I do not have a journalist uh, training at all, or journalism training at all. But one day I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to face the fears. That's what leadership is about. That's what growth is about. Um, Doing things that are uncomfortable and doing them not for myself, but for those who can benefit for what I have to offer. So here we are. And I'm anticipating this to be a great time. I'm really excited. I was um, very honored when you asked if I'd be your first guest And I've kind of had butterflies in my stomach all day because I'm just really excited to do this. Nice. So I remember when I pitched the idea uh, to my boss, which is Robin, and she approved, I started brainstorming with Ben, the show's producer, uh, about what this podcast should be about and then who should I bring on. And once we narrowed down who, I mean, what the podcast was going to be about, instantly you popped into my head. I knew I wanted you to be my first interview. One, because I knew you'd be down to do it. But (laughs) secondly, uh, I knew you would bring a lively spirit to the conversation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I know we've worked together on some things Mm -hmm. in the past, and I always enjoy your company as well, and I think we have some awesome conversations. So... I'm excited to do this in the podcast format. Wow, me too. And speaking of conversations, because when I was um, in preparing for this interview, I started reminiscing about the first time you and I really had a chance to um, to sit and really get to know one another. And it was during a time where you and Cedric, our assistant director, you were working on a project for dining's dining excellence, mm-hmm. and your group was tasked with coming up with a way to shift the culture in dining to a mindset that was all about the guest experience, right? Mm -hmm. And so Cedric asked me to come in and to listen in on the meeting and give feedback. But anyway, uh, after the meeting was over, I remember you and I sat there for a while and we talked about a little bit of everything. So uh, we had talked about family, we talked about interests. We talked about school. We talked about work. Um, and I was just so impressed by your wit and character. I think I remember. Weren't we in the AI dining yes, room? Yes, we were. <laughs> yeah, I remember that being the first time that I truly felt like we started a connection mm-hmm. with one another. And that always happens after you start stop talking about the work stuff and start talking a little bit more about the person. And 
that moment in between you and I, and then it just kind of felt so natural mm-hmm. for anything else moving forward. So I do remember that in the AI oh, dining you room. Do? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, she's don't think I'm a crazy person. I remember. <laughs> but but one thing that stood out in our conversation was how much you, value you placed on your family. And even just before the podcast started, we were having a conversation and you were saying just about, you don't take work home, right? Because you want your family to know you're present. Not your exact words, but you uh, you stated something to that nature. Mm-hmm. So my first question to you is, what is it about family, more specifically, your family that brings you joy? Well, I grew up in a large Italian family. Mm-hmm. And we have always been very close. And it was just a part of my upbringing that family is important. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of have that ingrained in my brain, but when I think about my specific family now that I've created, um, with my children and my husband, it's the little things. So like if I get to surprise my daughter and pick her up from kindergarten Mm -hmm. instead of daycare, and when she comes out that door and she sees me and her little face lights up, Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that was such a great moment. Um, my husband will randomly leave me a post-it note, like on my bathroom mirror that mm-hmm. says, you know, miss you, love you, have a good day. Just l- the little itty bitty tiny things that happen. A movie night in the living room with popped popcorn. Mm-hmm. It, it's, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it's it's never the big moments that mean the most. Mm-hmm. It's always those little tiny things that just kind of add up and make me smile when I think about them. So true. So you say you're from a big Italian family. How many siblings do you have? So I only have three siblings, but this is like, you know, down to my cousins, now their kids, my kids, um, my aunts and uncles, Mm -hmm. you know, my mom. And um, up to just a few years ago, we had five living generations. So, like, Christmas Day and stuff like that at my grandma's house is always at least 50 people. You know, when we're having a small family event, we're Mm -hmm. like, oh, there's only 25 coming? (laughs) Like, that's weird. Like, how do we do dinner for 25? (laughs) So, it's just been a very large extended family Mm -hmm. that all feel like immediate family because we're so close and connected. That's awesome. I I love to hear that. I, I too, am from a big family. My grandmother had uh, nine kids, and each kid had at least three. I think my my father, because my my, uh, dad's mom, only had two. So you can imagine how large we are (laughs) when we go to uh, an event. I remember Mm -hmm. my son's first birthday party uh, that I had at my house. There were, I counted, 80 people and about 60 were family. Yep. <laughs> so I understand uh, what you're talking about So and, 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 and absolutely love it and it's so important. So last year, I remember um, asking you to work on an assignment with me. I uh, don't even remember anymore what that assignment is, was about. But at the time you share with me, you were taking a step back from um, projects because you were overextending yourself. So without getting too personal, um, what led you to make that decision to step back from taking on extra projects here at work? So I remember the specific thing Mm -hmm. um, because it's not like me to take a step back. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, how I normally operate. Mm -hmm. I just, yes, 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 give me more, give me more. Mm -hmm. And it was to facilitate pathways. Mm -hmm. And I did all the pre-work, and I came to the meetings, and I reviewed all the material, Mm -hmm. and then I just thought to myself, I don't think this is the right thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. Um, One, because when I was trying to prioritize personal life, professional life, I had to think, what is the most important thing in my job, Mm -hmm. in my job description, in my professional life, what is my main responsibility, Mm -hmm. and that's to manage the market at Glenmore. And I wasn't giving the market at Glenmore enough time. And I had new supervisors who were reporting to me, and I couldn't focus on their development. I had new student leadership, and I couldn't focus on their development. And I felt like my operations were slipping. Mm -hmm. And because of that, then I would start working longer hours, later hours, Mm -hmm. trying to make sure that my operation was still where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. 
and get to do all the projects, but then like my home life was suffering. Mm. So I had to, that was the first time I ever said, no, I need to take a step back um, and really focus on my unit within the hours of work that I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, there's some shorter days, some longer days, right? Right. They ebb and flow. That's the nature of the business. (laughs) Um, But that, so I could rededicate some time to my children Mm -hmm. and to my family um, and not feel like I was always just slightly head above water. I really needed to get a better handle on things. And I know recently I said, okay, I'm ready to take on some mm-hmm, things. And it's because I allowed myself that time to develop mm-hmm. my supervisor team um, that, you know, works alongside me. So they're now successful in um, their operations and the tasks that they've been given. And with their success, it allows me a little more room to focus on extra projects or my own development. So, Wow, I love that. And I'm sure... Um, that was a hard decision to make. Was it, it was because then you think, is this going to look poorly on me? Mm-hmm. Or they think that I can't handle it. If I'm not doing extra, am I a great manager mm-hmm. or am I, um, contributing to the department rather than just to my operation? And I had to realize like me making my operation the best that it can be is contributing to the department. Right. If I can't have my operation perform where it's supposed to perform, mm-hmm then I'm not going to do any good <laughs> trying to do something for the offer- or for the department as, you know, on a larger scale. Sure. So having that break, and, and earlier we were talking about family and the value of it too, how did that break benefit your family, would you say? Family dinners, mm-hmm. right? So we mm-hmm. were an eat-on-the-go family mm-hmm. before, um, and... I have to schedule dinners. Mm -hmm. So there's days where I know that I'm going to leave on time because we're having family dinner night. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the time each kid, we alternate who's going to pick the meal. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting when it gets to the Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) six-year-old. I can imagine. Right? So um, just having more time together. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm in one of my most challenging times as a parent of now a teenager. Uh And, um, not when I'd get home because the day was so long and I would just, I didn't want, I didn't want to talk to anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds awful, but it's like really just like, I've been taking care of people like all day. Mm -hmm. Like I just need some time before I take care of you guys now Mm -hmm. too, you know? Um, but leaving, uh, work at a more appropriate time and having just some mental space to be able to you know, give more to my children. I got home. Like my teenager is now way more open with me. I randomly find him like coming and sitting next to me where before it's like, what are you doing in your room? You need to come out. And so just having that time there has benefited um, my parenting with him so that we can kind of reconnect Mm -hmm. rather than feel so separate in these, you know, these last years that he's at home, you know, that's an important time. Yeah. And a hard time to help them navigate through. So, right, very, yeah, that that is that's very important. Now, how would you say it impacted you as as a manager? Were there obstacles you faced when making that decision to take a break? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so, one, you start comparing yourself. You know, as far as an obstacle goes, like, mm-hmm. oh, this manager's doing this, and this manager's doing this, and if I'm not doing as many projects. Am I going to be perceived as not as high performing? Are people going to think I'm slacking? Mm -hmm. Are people going to think that I'm not as invested Mm -hmm. in UCR dining? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's it's personal obstacles. A lot of them is your own personal feelings and your own, you know, worrying about others' perceptions. And there is, I think... To an extent, there's an expectation that we do more for our department yes. as, as we should. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find that as long as you have the open and honest conversations with your leadership team and mm-hmm. letting them know your intent and your reasons why and telling your own story and telling your own reasons why rather than letting people create their own narrative about mm-hmm. your decisions, mm-hmm. then it works out fine. It just, it just takes a little bit of bravery to mm-hmm. go in and say, I'm pulling back for a while, and this is why. Yeah. So, That is brave. It's funny you say that because I was thinking when we had that conversation, 
and you were talking about pulling back and I know the demands that's placed on dining. Mm-hmm. It's like, she's a brave woman. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, uh, projects pop up so quickly on us and we're expected to, to take them on mm-hmm. and, and be successful in, in getting them completed. So, um, I, I like how you use that, that term brave, cause that was a brave thing to do. Do you think that, um, it's important for leaders to pause and recenter themselves from time to time? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It is so important because you just start go, getting on the hamster wheel mm-hmm. and you just go and go and you start um, lacking intention. Mm-hmm. And if you're not doing your work with intention, it's mm-hmm. never going to be as good as it could be. Mm-hmm. Um, you turn on blinders. You start. You stop seeing things. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you start walking past things that you should be correcting because you're just spinning on this hamster wheel, you mm-hmm. know, and... Um, it can, the day can get away from you. Um, so I think it's absolutely so critical for anyone, not mm-hmm. just managers, but anyone to stop and think about what have their intentions been lately and what have they been doing to work with those intentions? Mm-hmm. Um, what is it that they found themselves doing that they, they didn't like about mm-hmm. themselves? How could they change that? Um, I was very fortunate to be able to go to... MSAP, the Manager Skills Assessment mm-hmm. Program, in October, which was nothing but days about recentering <laughs> and <laughs> getting nothing but feedback about yourself and your performance. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, you know, the setting was in Lake Arrowhead and it was absolutely beautiful. And you'd have these really heavy conversations about yourself mm-hmm. and, and how others perceived you. And then I'd go on a little hike by myself and kind of think about it and really try to create some plans to take back and and refocus so yeah I like that you know I'm often talking to people about intentional living and Mm -hmm. and and doing every every day that you wake up and you head out the door be intentional about the day right because it does make a, a huge difference so I like that you're aware of of being intentional in the way you move through the earth, uh, is as I like to say. You, you mentioned earlier in our conversation that this was the first time you really stepped back from, or that time mm-hmm. was a time that you, uh, was one of the first times stepping back from projects. My question to you is, is there another time in your career where you think that it would have been wise to step back, yet you didn't. Yes and no. Um, so like we said, you know, or you said during the intro, the majority of um, my work experience came from Starbucks Coffee Company. Mm. And so I was there for almost 13 years. So I kind of grew up a little bit at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And... They were very structured in our work time. Mm-hmm. So um, even though we were managers, we, you know, we still punched a clock, mm-hmm. you know, so they didn't really allow you to go over in that time. Uh, and you weren't allowed to work off the clock. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my time was very protected with them, mm-hmm. um, which isn't normal in yeah. a leadership no, world. So I would have to go way back before Starbucks um, when I was a general manager of a movie theater Mm -hmm. and I was young and hungry and didn't have children (laughs) and I find myself there all the time (laughs) you know it was a cool place to work and Mm -hmm. I got to watch movies for free and all that you know fun stuff but there's definitely some moments where I would look back and like oh I could have done so much more in my early adulthood life but I just spent it at work Mm -hmm. um but definitely at being in this a work environment mm-hmm. at UCR has um, definitely made me have, and, and, and having children mm-hmm. and the ages that they are, yeah. it's really the first time in my life where I've had to truly prioritize mm-hmm. a lot of competing priorities. So 
it's a new it's it's a new skill that I'm learning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I I am sure there are so many mothers like myself out there who totally understand that. You know, prior to kids, it seemed like you had all the time in the world to to do things. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of that time, especially if you're you're a hungry um, person. Uh, meaning, you know, hungry for success and have a high drive, Mm -hmm. then you would put that time into your occupation. But motherhood will slap you (laughs) and make you realize that, uh, wow, I don't have all the time in the world anymore. And these, you know, little ones really need some of my time as as well. So, um, you know, just speaking of time, our, our, I find that our society is just moving at an incredibly fast pace. Oh, it really is. Yeah. It, it, it just, it, it doesn't seem like there's never enough time in the day. And and I often find myself, and we talked about this a little bit before we, we jumped on the podcast, working the wee hours of the night just so I can keep up with all my responsibilities. You know, responsibilities as a mom, as a wife, as a student, as an employee, as a mentor, and all those other roles that I play. Um, that it gets tiring. So in theory, right, mm-hmm. I get the wisdom in, in taking time to recharge. But then I'm also stuck with, okay, but if I do that, then I'm going to be even further behind, right? The rat waste than, than, uh, than when I started. Does that kind of make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and interesting along those lines, I was reading an article by Forbes the other day that stated, of employees are burnt out. And I think they're burnt out um, because trying to keep up with all the demands of the different roles that they play. What advice would you give to leaders who are experiencing burnout or feeling overwhelmed uh, by personal and work responsibilities? So this might sound really cheesy, Um, I was talking with one of my employees, and I can't remember who I was talking with. There was other people in the office, and I said, like, just go take your 15. Mm -hmm. Or it was something along those lines. No, just go take your break. I don't care if there's a line. Like, you need a break. Mm -hmm. No, 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 I need to be there. And I said, self-care is not selfish. (laughs) (laughs) And then we searched, and it turned out it was a hashtag, and I didn't even know. So that was kind of funny. But you can't. Be your best or give someone else your best unless you take care of yourself. Um, There's so many times where I tell my kids when I go home, um, I'm closing my door. Don't bother me for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you need anything, you know, ask your older brother or whatever the case may be. But unless the house is on fire, (laughs) leave me alone for a little bit, you know. And... um, They know and they appreciate that sometimes I need that little bit of space so that I can come back out and be more present. I'll do the same thing um, at work. I'll just usually go around and tell people, like, I need to take, like, 20 minutes to myself. Mm -hmm. And I'll generally go find a table way, way out on the patio Mm -hmm. or go to another unit for lunch or something along those lines to recenter and re-energize myself because... I can tell that I'm not being my best self. I'm being kind of snappy or I'm just making quick decisions without really thinking things through because I feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's important to take time for yourself, but without the guilt. Yeah. And I think that was a hard place for me to get to Mm -hmm. is that I felt guilty. Um, Now I tell my husband, who's a student, Mm -hmm. right? So he's a full-time student. This is something new. And often he wants to come home and I listen to him talk about his day and this class and this class and because it's new for him. So he's really excited. Sure. And I usually have to tell him at a point, like, I need to be done talking. Yes. <laughs> so, and he gets it and he's not offended. And we talked about it before. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if I need space, I'm going to tell you. Or if I need to just shut my brain off for a while, I'm mm-hmm. going to tell you. Don't take offense to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want to give somebody just a little bit of me at a time, yeah. you know? And so by taking the time to just honor myself mm-hmm. for like a little that. bit, yeah. then I'm, you know, much, it's much more beneficial for everybody. Right. I like that. Honor yourself. Taking that time to honor yourself. Yeah, that is something that, that's difficult and, and challenging to do. 
because like you said, the guilt, there, there's guilt in that. When you initially started asking people about um, having time to honor yourself, and I'm going to use that again because I like that, <laughs> having the time to honor yourself, what was the initial um, response? Were people surprised, a little taken back, uh, offended? What, what do you, you find the responses of people were? Mostly surprised, so mm-hmm. if it came from a direct report, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm telling them, go home early, mm-hmm. <laughs> you put in too much time yesterday, mm-hmm. or, you know, you wrap it up, go home, we're slow. Mm-hmm. Um, no, 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 I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay, and I'm like, really, go home, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times it's first surprise, like, mm-hmm. why are you telling me this, um, and it just knowing I'm I'm very results driven Mm -hmm. and that can be a good thing and it can not be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So for me to remind myself that, you know, I allow myself this time when I need it, I need to make sure I'm opening the door for them to allow themselves their time. I don't do it as much as I, I should, um, you know, to tell you the truth because I forget to say, go home earlier. Did you take your break or whatever the case may be? But um, usually they're a little surprised by it. Right, right. Because that, that, that is not the norm. The, the norm is, you know, to keep driving people, it, it seems, mm-hmm. at least in, in my experience. So I'm going to switch gears on you for a moment and okay. ask you to share with the audience um, the pathway that led you to leadership. And what that journey was like, or has been like. I think it was, I think so many people have maybe a similar story Mm -hmm. that I started off as a, you know, a line level employer, entry level position. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was an usher. When you got hired at the movie theater, you usually start as an usher. And then if you're doing a good job, you get moved up to box office or the concession stand. And then Mm -hmm. if you're still doing a good job, you go to concession supervisor. Mm -hmm. And... And that would be, like, the equivalent to, like, our student supervisor, um, like, leadership team that we have here on campus. You know, counting people in and out of their registers and putting people where they need to be. Um, And I was only going to do it part-time, and then I was going to start, you know, start school. Mm -hmm. Um, And then a position opened up for a salaried assistant manager position, and I thought, well, I'll go for it. Mm-hmm. And I went went for it, and to my surprise, got the position. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. I was with one company who ended up branching. Uh, those two owners left and started a different company. Um, I was approached by them like a year after they split, asking if I would hop over to their new theater chain Mm -hmm. and come in as a senior manager and I took the opportunity Mm -hmm. and that my general manager left not too long after that and I was the acting general manager for a few months and then I was offered the position permanently so here I was a 19 year old (laughs) girl (laughs) um which I was reminded of a lot (laughs) but I was a 19 year old girl um in this general manager position and uh it was tough Mm -hmm. it was really really tough um you know it was a male dominated world out of the whole theater chain there was only two females I was definitely the youngest Mm -hmm. and I think that's where my results driven kind of attitude started coming in Mm because I felt the need to prove myself Mm -hmm. and then it just kind of took off from there. I was really successful. Um, Starbucks poached me a little bit (laughs) after that. I was called by a recruiter. Um, And I went in with Starbucks and, um, you know, was a store manager there for a long time. And then they kind of honed my skills, you know, because I didn't have any leadership training or anything like that in the movie theater world. Mm -hmm. And so when I came into Starbucks and they had classes like servant leadership Mm -hmm. and all of those things, uh, it wasn't then until I really got to uh, learn the skills of people management. Mm -hmm. Like I could achieve a result, but I wasn't necessarily focused on the development of others or creating a great, you know, work experience for Mm -hmm. people. I was just 
Starbucks is really what helped me learn those skills as I kind of grew up with them. Wow. 19, 19. and a general manager. Yes. <laughs> I had a man ask me once, can I speak to your manager? And I said, I'm the manager. How can I help you? And he said, you're not a manager. You're a little girl. <laughs> I said, well, this is what you get. So. Wow. I, I can't imagine, you know, at, at 19, I think I wanted to head to the next party. I wanted the least amount of responsibility I can have. Uh, wow, Jamie, our time is, is coming to an end already. You know, time flies when there's good conversations with, with good people. But before we end our time together, I have a couple more questions for you. I would like for you to share with me on a scale of 1 to 10, how committed you are to maintaining a balanced life, that uh, personal and, and work life, and why it's important to you to maintain that healthy work and um, work life balance. Commitment level is a 10. Mm -hmm. um, it can be difficult. Mm -hmm. it, it can be hard to ask your boss for what you need, mm -hmm. but I'm confident that. If they know that I'm still performing with, you know, mm -hmm. even if I'm not here a 10 hour day and I'm still achieving results and accomplishing what needs to be accomplished and still being successful mm -hmm. um, and then asking for time I may need here or there to have the balance, then they're going to understand and appreciate it. We come from a very supportive department. Mm -hmm. Um, and anytime I've asked for anything that I need, I've been met with nothing more than just the most supportive, you know, um, comments from directors or my general manager. Um, it's of course, take care of your family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Family comes first. That's what you need. Um, so definitely a 10 and it's important for me to maintain that balance because if I don't, mm -hmm then I'm not going to be happy anywhere. I'm not going to be happy at home. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be happy at work. Um, everything is just going to feel overwhelming. Yeah. And, you know, I had some personal experiences almost a year ago where you realize that life is so short. Yes. And I'm not really willing to give up more time than I need. Mm -hmm. And... I don't have to, and that's okay. That's okay. You're right. That's okay. And I hope, myself included, uh, the majority of, of us really learn from our conversation with you today how important that self-care is. Um, and, and being intentional, right? Being mm -hmm. intentional um, with that, that, that self-care. So that is our time together, Jamie. That went by so fast. <laughs> it did, and, and it was definitely a blast. It's been my pleasure, as always, um, to chat with you today. Thank you for being open about your struggles with uh, balancing uh, commitments. Um, you have dropped a lot of knowledge on our listeners today. Thank you so much, Ebony. I really appreciated this conversation with you and I hope that any, you know, even if just one listener mm -hmm. listens to this podcast mm -hmm. and go, I need this time off or I need to do this mm -hmm. for myself, then besides this being an enjoyable experience, mm -hmm. I'll know that this conversation was well worth it. Oh, very nice. Well, thank you, Jamie. And thank you, everyone, for listening to uh, the Pathways to Leadership podcast. Until next time. Mm -hmm.